And welcome back to the Heart of Chaos. I'm Avier. Once again, I welcome you back to The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. In the last episode, we've made our way over to the Sealed Temple, found the old lady who helped us along, defeat, defeated the imprisoned, and helped Groose to realize that he's not the only one who's important. In this episode, we're going to make our way back to Skyloft because we need to talk to the Academy Master and hope he knows something about the old song. Whoa. Great! Goron, I have found some! Um... Thanks for interrupting me. I was being all informative and then suddenly Great Goron. Hmm. Oh, this could be a problem. I cannot carry a tune. I could not create beautiful tones if the wild animal threatened to roll me down a hill. What can I do? Oh, a beautiful tune, you say? Blessed butterflies, you say? Well, if we learned anything in the last episode. Boing! Boing! That is it! One of the talking statues that ancient texts spoke of! There is just no mistaking it! Oh my goodness! Also, he provides you with treasure every time you do this, so... Uh, if you ever... It's in your best interest to always, uh, gather these. Skip! There was no point in skipping that, was there? Anyway, let's go ahead and talk to it. Butterflies tend to gather around the gossip stones, like myself. If you find a spot swarming with butterflies, play a tune of great beauty, and the goddess gossip stone might just pop out of the ground with a boing oing. I'm so terribly sorry. I've always been told when I was younger that uh, gossip stones don't just gossip, that they sing everything. So it's always in my head to sing when they're uh, talking. I'm gonna talk to him now. Ooh. It is just like the old texts say, buddy. It appeared with a boing oing and <laughs> spoke in some strange tongue. Ooh. It sang in a strange tongue, get it right. This is a major leap forward in my study of the talking statues. Singing statues! Next up are those goddess walls. I've got an inkling and I will not have to look very far for those either. And I mean to find one, no matter what. Uh, we will likely not be covering every single area where these can appear, but uh, we will definitely get them as we see them, as they are sort of important, but not necessarily needed to complete the game. Okay, so let's go to this guy and we'll meet you back in Skyloft. Alright, so I've made my way back to Skyloft, and, uh, you know, we'll just take a shortcut through the bazaar, because I want to check something on the way there. Uh, nothing too serious. Just wanting to make sure and all that. Oh, hey, this is the item check. Okay, yeah, she doesn't say anything different right now. Gosh darn it. No thanks, I'm good. Sigh. Alright. But our friend over here does have something that I'm after. Uh, we're going to look at this. Aha, uh -huh, that's a sacred shield. As you might surmise from its name, it can handle all the variety of attacks. Fire, not a sweat, electricity, no painful zaps. Plus, it will automatically repair itself when it sustains damage. It's a little fragile, but that, that shouldn't be a problem for one as talented and agile as yourself. And it's 500 rupees. I don't have the money right now. I will definitely come back for that because... That is the most useful shield in the game. For the at least the most realistic shield you're probably going to be getting in the game. Okay, so let's head our make our way out here. And let's get up to the Knight Academy. I will probably have to find some way to gather some rupees. Oh, however will I do that? So let's go ahead and make our way towards the Academy Master's room. I actually don't remember what his official title is. Headmaster! Headmaster, like like in a college campus or something. Headmaster of a campus. Okay, so we're in the lower... No, we're upstairs. Good. Uh, where we're going to have to go is obviously into the Grandmaster... Headmaster, not Grandmaster. I know I'm getting two things confused right now. Oh, boy. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk to him. Excuse me, Gepora. You're back, Link. Good to see you're still in one piece. So how's it going down there? Are you any closer to finding my Zelda? Hmm, I see. My dear Zelda, things must be terribly trying for her down there. And it can't be easy for you now either, can it? What? 
You want to know the lyrics to the song that Zelda sang on the day of her wing ceremony? You know, it's n I'm not much of a singer. Sing it! Listen, as I said, I wouldn't feel comfortable serenading you, but if it's the lyrics you're after, I can recite them for you. Let's see. O youth, guided by the servant of the goddess, unite earth and sky, and bring light to the land. That's the first part, but as I recall, there's a second verse to the song. O youth, show the two whirling sails the way to the light tower, and before you a path shall open, and a heavenly song you shall hear. I believe that's the whole thing. The light tower mentioned in the song is a real place. I'm sure you've seen the tower in the plaza. I don't know a thing about two whirling sails, though. It sounds like a song you're suggesting that if one shows the whirling sails the way to the tower, something will happen. But how do you go about that? And what does it mean, two whirling sails? Hmm. Well, I think that's where our puzzle-solving skills come into play. Um, one of the criticisms Skyward Sword got when it was released was the fact that there is a ton, and I do mean a ton of backtracking, and going through areas that, you know, people weren't a huge fan of because it just, it felt trivial. And this is one of these areas that I probably could agree with that, like, I'm not a huge fan of this puzzle, but uh, it is not terrible, and I will outright say Skyward Sword is probably my favorite game of all time, so... Obviously, I'm going to be a bit biased. Alright, so we need to make our way to the whirling sails, as was described earlier. And they look- Oh, look! A blessed butterflies! Well, let's go ahead and play the harp and see what happens. Guys? 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 Yes, these aren't blessed butterflies that apparently do anything. What a shame. You would think that the first ones you'd see would do something. Anyway, uh, you may notice these windmill-like things that are pointing in the weird direction. But you might also see that there is a device here that we saw when we were in the Laneru mining facility. Well, let's use the Gus Bellows to blow it and aim it in this direction. Towards the lights. The light tower. There we go. Now that's all lit up, so we've got to find something, the one that's identical to that one. So let's go ahead and make our hay fledge. <sighs> hey there, Link. Thanks again for that stamina potion. Since you gave it to me, I've been doing push-ups like a machine. You'll see it. I'll be as tough as you in no time. Sweet. That's a great thinking fledge. You might also see that in the distance over there, the other one we need to go grab. So let's go ahead and make our way over there, shall we? Alright, so down here we go, and up and around, this is really awkward for commentary's sake, I probably should have just cut, but it felt in my distance and it felt makeable. Alright, so let's go over... Where's the thing? What's up, Link? So you're curious about the wi that windmill, eh? Pretty smart design, I gotta say. See, you can turn the windmill so that it can always catch the wind no matter which way it's blowing. But, well, there used to be this little propeller attached to the windmill so that you could turn it. The thing flew off ages ago. It must have dropped down somewhere off the edge, down beneath the clouds. The windmill's been used, been uselessly sitting there ever since. I highly suggest you retrieve the windmill's propeller from the land below to reorient the windmill. Thank you, Fee. Thank you. You want to know if you could? I could fix the windmill if you brought back the propeller? Well, if I had the propeller, I could probably rig something together to get it back on there, sure. But how would you even go looking for the propeller in the first place? Once something falls through the clouds, it's gone for good. Hang on. Come to think of it, Gondo at the scrap shop told me that someone in his family once used a flying robot to haul junk back from beneath the clouds. But we're talking about a tale that's been passed down over a lot of years, so I wouldn't put much stock in it. I would. Let's go talk to Gondo over at the bazaar. Oh no! Uh, hang on a second. 
I see you're looking well these days. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you'd found the time to gather all the variety of magnificent treasures. Come, come closer. If it's treasure you seek, I'll use my mystical vision to answer for you. Jesus, I don't know how to speak, nor does his mustache... I, be I believe it's his mustache. His mustache captivates me far more than his eyes do. Anyway, we're in the bazaar. I was going to just run over up to Gondo, but he interrupted me like a rude person with a mustache. Hey, kid, what's up? You look like you need something off your... You need to get something off your chest. I think I know what it is. You've got a favor to ask me, right? Yes! Yes, I do. Huh? It's about this old robot my dad grandpa used to tinker around with. You probably just came here to make fun of the crazy junk guy... F for, of this the crazy junk guy for believing in his grandpa's stupid stories, right? Why can't I read today? Well, get in line. I've heard it before. Wait, that's not why you're here? You say you need to pick up something from below the clouds with this robot? Do you know what that means? That means you believe in my grandpa's story too, don't you? Well, I'm happy to hear that someone else believes me, but I don't think I can help you. You see, my grandpa's old robot, what's it called again? Oh, hey, that's right. I remember. His name is Scrapper. He may not be much to look at these days, but he was an amazing robot once. When you called him, he would go do anywhere and haul anything. Sadly, as you can see now, he's just another busted hunk of junk. But old Gramps did tell me this. You can get him working again with the extract from an ancient flower. It's like oil to this guy, but I've never even heard of, much less seen any such thing. Take mine! As you see, we've collected these in the Lane Rue Desert. What? You you have one? Are you kidding me? That's amazing! I love how he doesn't even question where we got it. So this is an ancient flower. I can feel some slick, oily stuff coming out of the stem. Great! With this, we can fix Scrapper. Wait right here. I'll have him up and running in no time. So, how do you plan to recover all that stuff from beneath the that fell beneath the clouds? You know, you could always ask the fortune teller over there. Psh! We don't need the fortune teller. I know exactly where I'm going because we can now douse for things. Plus, not to mention the fact that I know exactly where it is. And in the next episode of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, we're going to go beneath the clouds and recover the propeller so that we... Okay, I will see what the dousing has to do. What? Gosh. We're going to be making our way back to Elden Volcano to get the propeller. I'm gonna be a kid of reunion and I'll hope to see you all then. <laughs>